How's it going? I'm Andrew with Investors Hub, and there's a super cool resource in the DeFi and cryptocurrency world that got really popular this year. That's called Layer 2 Systems or Layer 2 Applications. Now, what is Layer 2? And we're here to answer that question, help you out there. Uh, and for the purposes of this video, I'm going to be grouping together side chains, plasma chains, state channels, and rollups all under the umbrella of Layer 2. And uh, we're going to be using summaries and analogies as much as possible uh, in order to uh, make this more digestible and easier to understand, because Layer 2 is a complicated subject. First off, let's start with context. If there's a Layer 2, then what is Layer 1? Well, Layer 1 is whatever blockchain you started on, but chances are it's the Ethereum mainnet, the Ethereum blockchain. And despite how miraculous the technology is, it's got some problems. First and foremost, it can and often is extremely expensive to validate things on the Ethereum blockchain. Like we talked about in our Cryptocurrency Basics video, which you should go check out, the Ethereum blockchain requires gas fees, and as the network gets more congested, gas fees go up. Gas fees are what it's called, and I suppose that analogy works, but I like to think of it like ticket fees and bribery. There's only a thousand seats on the ferry and 10,000 people that want to get on. You're going to have to do a bit of palm greasing if you want to get on the ferry, paid to the validators. This issue comes from a lack of scalability in the current version of Ethereum. Well, that sucks and really reduces the operability of the Ethereum blockchain, unless you're moving around tens of thousands of dollars. So if someone's trying to design an app for the Ethereum blockchain, like say an online banking system or a blockchain based game or really anything that they expect to handle consumer amounts of money, it's not really going to work. Plus, if your users are trying to send 20 grand worth of crypto to someone, do you really think they want to pay 100 bucks to do it? I think that sidechains are probably the best place to start for layer two. Sidechains help solve the scalability issue by taking the burden off the main net and by having different rules. A great analogy that I saw, and that I am totally stealing, is that sidechains are a bit like doing business in another country, where the rules are more fast and loose. The other country is uh, over a river. What do you need to get across a river? That's right, a bridge. Bridging is the act of freezing your assets on one chain using a smart contract and then getting vouchers for those assets on the side chain or application you're heading into. Give your stuff to the bridge keeper, get vouchers, and then you then wheel and deal on the other country. You hop back over the bridge and trade whatever new vouchers you got for your stuff back. Ethereum sidechains also have the benefit of being able to do the full suite of Ethereum smart contracts, but they lack some of that layer one security. If you're the sensible type, a bunch of alarms probably went off in your head. How do I know that the vouchers I'm trading in this other country are backed by real assets? I don't trust this sidechain as much as I trust Bitcoin or Ethereum. How do I know that the voucher transactions are going off properly? How do I know that they'll even give me my original assets back for my own vouchers? How do I know that they won't just close the bridge behind me? The answer is, you don't necessarily. Your life is in the hands of the sidechain. I am being a little bit over the top. I don't want to throw any extra shade on sidechains that I need to. Do you know how your bank works? Do you know how Amazon works or any marketplace that you trade on? Really, these questions and these what ifs can be applied to any system that you don't really understand the deep guts of. And even if you did really understand the guts of it, there's no way to guarantee that shady business isn't being done behind the scenes. You have to trust that the place you're operating in is legit, but the Wild West nature of crypto, due to its anonymity and lack of regulation, means that it's easier than usual to step on a landmine. Another type of Layer 2 system is a state channel, and I actually think it's the easiest of all the Layer 2s to understand. But like my little asterisk over the sidechains bit earlier, some people will argue that this isn't a true layer two. So two or more parties decide they want to trade with one another. They'll each bring the max amount of money they want to trade and sign it over to the smart contract, which connects them to a state channel application. That application gives them vouchers and puts them in a special room where they can trade back and forth as much as they want. Then when someone is done, they knock on the door and announce that they're leaving and want to exchange their vouchers for crypto. After a fraud challenge period, they leave with their new balances. You only pay gas fees going in and going out. You don't pay any gas fees while you're in the room trading with each other. 
Unfortunately, you are limited to what you can do in these rooms, so no full smart contract support. The next type is a plasma chain, which shares characteristics with side chains and may or may not be a layer two solution, depending on how picky the person you're asking is. A plasma chain based system creates what are known as child chains, which are copies of the main chain and can make a basically unlimited number of them. You bridge on over to the plasma chain system and perform your transactions. The system is more general purpose than state channels, but still has a slow checkout period, and you still can't do the fancy stuff with smart contracts. You'll have to stick to basic transactions. Lastly, we got roll-up applications, which are true undisputed layer two systems because they fully use layer one for their security. Going back to our ferry analogy, roll-ups save you money and time because they stack passengers on the main net ferry vertically. They compress transaction data, it opens up a whole nother dimension rather than just piling people bow to stern and port to starboard. The interesting thing about rollups is that they keep one foot on the main chain and the other foot in the application, and that is the easiest layman way that I can explain it. There are two major kinds of rollups, opportunistic and zero knowledge, also known as ZK rollups. So opportunistic rollups operate under the assumption that all's well and good until a transaction is challenged and the exact nature of how fraud is challenged depends on the application that you're using. So just like some other layer two solutions, opportunistic rollups have a long challenge period, sometimes real long, and you gotta wait a considerable amount of time to be able to check out. Opportunistic rollups have full smart contract support. ZK rollups forego needing a challenge period and they're verified using a snark. <laughs> a snark. ZK rollups forego needing a challenge period and are verified using a snark. Zero knowledge, succinct, non-interactive argument of knowledge. It's an interesting system that involves proving you know something without actually revealing what you know. Unfortunately, the exact details of how that functions is a bit over my head. Uh, I got a degree in communications, not math, and it's 20 grand that I can't get back. They're more private and much faster, but require a greater degree of implicit trust in the DeFi app, especially in the beginning. It is much harder to port more complex smart contracts to ZK rollup applications, so they are a bit limited in what they can do right now. If you liked the video, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Leave us a comment down below, tell us what you thought, and uh, you can follow us on Twitter, iHub underscore vision, and I'll see you again soon.